And Michael, just, just talk us through where the battles are currently being fought in that part of Ukraine. Uh, yes, Jane. This is one of the weeks in which, <clears throat> to understand any one part of the battle, you've got to see the whole battle space. And effectively, there are three battles going on at the moment uh, in Kharkiv, in Sverodonetsk, of course, and in Kherson. And those three spaces are all related to each other. In Kharkiv, in the north, <clears throat> the Ukrainians have been pushing at the Russians. That offensive looked as if, it, as if it had run out of steam a little bit a week ago, but now they're pushing again. It looks as if that they're pushing up towards the border with Russia and that they've split uh, some of the Russian forces. More importantly, down in Kherson, they launched quite a big offensive about 10 days ago now. <clears throat> and that's an important point. Kirshen's the first big city that the Russians captured. If the Ukrainians take it off them, that will be a big, big symbolic victory. And what the Ukrainians are doing, they opened up a new front from uh, Sonorovica through Davidiv Brid right up to uh, Visokopilia, uh, which is a front of about 50 miles. And the reports over the weekend is that around Davidiv Brid, they'd crossed the river Ingulets. This is a, a small winding river. It goes all the way up through the area, right up through these, uh, th these towns, townships there. And in crossing the river, the Ukrainians have given themselves a very good chance of making progress in a, uh, an offensive to cut round behind the Russians and put some pressure on the Russian forces that are in Kershaw. The reason that they think they might be able to do this, it seems, is that the Russians may have thinned out their forces in Kershaw and further um, east from here in uh, Melitopol. There are reports that a lot of Russian troops seem to have disappeared from the roadblocks and the checkpoints in uh, Melitopol. So <clears throat> those um, fronts are, are developing mainly because of what is actually happening in Severodonetsk. And, and what about Severodonetsk? I mean, give us a little bit more detail about it. We've been talking about it for quite a few weeks now. There's been a lot of action there. What is the latest? Yeah, this is the, the, this is the essence of the whole thing, Jane. In Severodonetsk, <clears throat> the Russians looked as if they'd taken more or less the whole of the city about a week ago. The Ukrainians looked as if they were pushing back to Lishyshansk, which is a normal phased withdrawal, looked fairly sensible. But last week, they began to cross the river back again. This is the river Severodonetsk, which is a very important river. The Ukrainians have, have, have got at least one bridge that they can use. Don't know how much heavy traffic it can take, but they're able to get across the river. And they've pushed into, again, into Severodonetsk. So there's street fighting going on there. Now, why are the Ukrainians doing that? Severodonetsk is not the most important objective. It's, it's symbolically important, but it's not strategically so important. I think there are two things going on here in the way that the Ukrainians are thinking about it. The important places are Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. For control of the rest of the Donbass, those two cities, Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, are really important. The Ukrainians must feel that the threat to Slavyansk and Kramatorsk is not so immediate. It gives them time. They don't feel as if they've got to pull right back to defend those two cities. So they're putting more into holding the Russians in Severodonetsk. And I suspect that the reason they're doing this is because the Russians are so obsessed with this place that they're pushing all of their forces in there. That's why they have thinned their forces around Kharkiv and further south in Melitopol and even in Kershaw. And the fact that the Ukrainians are able to, as it were, make progress in the north and the south is partly because they are, in military terms, they're pinning the Russians in place by fighting so fiercely in Severodonetsk itself. And so for this next week, one suspects that this whole battlefront will be dictated by three offensives and two rivers. Jane. Michael, thank you.